Guys, we are here taking a look at the new head unit. We got this for the 2013 cross check. So this is gonna be a little unboxing and then we do an in, uh, install video. Right off the bat, we have certain cables. This is gonna control your USBs, your audio, and if you wanted to do um, backup camera, it's there for you. Wire antenna, this is like the main harness for dimmer switch. Again, more audio cables because it is an audio head unit. But um, yeah, provided for you. You don't have to buy anything extra. And then we have the big one right here. All right, check out this head unit. Looking oh so good. This is for the car I tried. It looks very similar to my previous car, which was a Subaru WRX. Um, I've always thought a lot about like these cross tracks because of the hazard buttons. Now, something that's different about this car is the AC controls are not digital. So there's gonna be two cables coming out of it and then there's still the harnesses, the power and stuff like that. So that's gonna be interesting to use right there. Um, but yeah, look at this head unit. The, the trim actually matches the color very well. I mean, the factory one does have a kind of like a slightly like brush plastic look to it. But then you got this, it's gonna be matte. And it's gonna match more of a, just like the overall interior. So it's not gonna clash. All right, so the first step is because this AC unit is analog, we're just gonna have to remove the glove box. The glove box is pretty simple. You see this little, uh, little damper right here. You just kind of pinch it and then pull it out. Uh, then a tab right here, you just push it in. So I'll show you guys that, how that works. Pops out, both sides. You kind of just give it a nice hug. And then there are these little clips that kind of hold it from the bottom. Take that out. There's a little white thing right here. And then you see like a little circular thing. This is the AC wire. So we're gonna have to pull that out. There you go. And it's gonna be the exact on the other side. Right, so now we're under the driver. And it's kind of hard to show, but there's the, a very similar look under the driver side. It's the same cable style, so you just have to go under the dash. Very little room under here, so I can't really film it. Just pull that out and you should be good. All right, so I've removed those two cables on the side. The next thing you have to do is just pry the unit forward, and I'll show you guys how to do that. We call this the pray and pull. This is a newer car, like 2013, so the plastics are a little bit stronger and less brittle. So I don't think we're gonna have any issues here. All right, so we can... Try the top part would be the easiest. Little holes right here, just be careful, okay? This is, it is plastic, so you don't wanna be too powerful on it. The way I usually do is so I pull it from the top and then I, I kinda work my way around and I end at the end. I end right here. Okay, so let's pull from the top. Pry, 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 pry. So nice, we got the, we're prying from the top. Now be careful. Now we want to get removed the hazard button from the top. There's a little clip back here. You can also push it forward too. Pushing it forward is a little bit easier for me at least. So when you push it forward, you can pop it out a little bit easier. Now we're gonna reuse this hazard button for the other interior. So, hazard button out. Let's see if we get a little more clearance. Keep pulling. So once you pull it out this much, you should be able to there's some plugs underneath. Can't really show that. But you want to unplug these two harnesses in the bottom. I can barely see them myself, so. All 
Once you unplug those wires on the bottom, which I can show you a closer picture of, you have to route these little AC cables around. So here are the AC cables that we talked about. And then the back of this is how it looks like. So when you're unclipping it, it's from the top, which is there's very little clearance, but keep that in mind. So here's the clips too. You just push it like this and they're facing this way. All right, so we're gonna have to transfer a lot of these pieces over to the new head unit. But before we do that, so save that, put that somewhere safe. Now we're gonna have to remove the head unit, the OEM one. You can use a Phillips head, uh, it's a plus sign. Screw. Now I call these Phillips, I know someone in my comments said they're not called Phillips head, uh, screws, Phillips head. And they look like this, okay. I've always called these Phillips, so I'm gonna call them Phillips heads. The plus sign, not the not the flat head. There you go. That's what we call them here in California. Boom. Then this whole thing pulls out, and just like before, let's put, let's put that protection on because the other one was made out of plastic. This one's actually made out of metal. These clips right here, so you want to be careful. Okay. Be careful. You want to unplug everything you see. All right, and there goes the head unit. Boom. Let's put that aside. Kind of see what we're dealing with right here. So this does have an aftermarket subwoofer in it. You can kind of see right here. You got these T-taps coming out of this main harness, which is interesting. And then you have uh, this box right here. Changes the two line channel to three. So I'm gonna take a picture of this for reference for later. Um, yeah, here is how it looks like. Oh shoot, it's been overexposed this whole time. Look at that. That's how it looks like. Yeah, at first you might say, whoa, 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 there's just too many wires, right? You wanna get this bag right here. I'm gonna take my glove. I'm wearing a glove because it was a little bit hot and sharp back down there, so that's why I wear a glove, but you want a harness like this right here. And this is gonna be your main one that you're gonna need to use. So there's gonna be some extra wires here, I can tell right off the bat. Now, the, the radio antenna is not powered here, so we don't need to use this one. Um, so we don't need to use this antenna one. And then there's gonna be some other things that we will not need to use. Uh, the reason why this is the case is Subaru um, changes their model year and the manufacturers of the aftermarket head units want to add the most compatibility. Like just, they just wanna make sure everyone's covered as much as possible that way easy for everyone so you end up you usually end up with extra stuff now stuff like this right here camera vin this camera this head unit isn't equipped with it but maybe a 2015 model is so that's why there's a camera um, reverse backup camera which this car is not equipped with so we don't have to worry about that now if you want to wire that um, separately then you can we just need to wire this one harness and it's gonna do most of the magic right here Boom. And then, so this, this other stuff hanging out, that's just, it's just gonna hang out. And then, let's see, some extra stuff right here. See, that doesn't fit, so don't worry about that. And we're gonna plug it into the main unit. Now this unit doesn't have anything plugged in yet, and that's totally fine. So boom, we got that in. All right, so I'm gonna turn the car on. And we're gonna fire this thing up for the first time. Let's just kind of mock it in place. Oh, it is loading, looking good. Close this door. Uh, 
Now the first initial boot up usually takes the longest. Ooh, that looks good. Nice and smooth. I don't hear any audio coming out of it. So we're gonna have to test that in a bit. Let's... There we go, you got radio. So I'm gonna hook up Bluetooth to it. All right, so I connected my phone through a USB-C cable. I'm using the Samsung. This is a Samsung, check this out. Boom, it's a Samsung Fold. And we're gonna try the latest and greatest from Samsung with this head unit. So I'm gonna put it to the accessory position. Automatically detects it, charging my phone. And then it should automatically pop up, says connecting. And now we're listening to some Kanye West, that new album. Is it trash? Let me know in the comments below. So we have Android Auto right here. Boom, you got YouTube music and whatnot. Think up. We even have some Teams. So you can use Microsoft Teams while you're in your car. How nuts is that? I don't know if I want to you know, do a meeting in my car, but well, <laughs> it's there, it's there. So, I'm gonna wrap uh, all the additional cables, not just USB, because I know now the audio is working and all that. It sounds really good. They have an aftermarket subwoofer. I did not use the dedicated subwoofer, so I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna take a look at that, see, but uh, for a normal install, you literally just plug that in and you should be fine. Hey guys, so um, let me just tell you about the stereo controls because it works right out of the box. You don't have to buy anything. Once you plug in that main harness, literally just one thing plugged into the head unit right now. Once you plug that in, what you do is you select what you want. So in this case, this is the, pre the next button. I go into my steering wheel and I press what I want the next button to be. Boom, I want this up button to be and then it saves it, okay? If it doesn't save it, then it won't turn blue. So let me try to do that. So you guys can see, I want that button right there. Boom. If it's, I want that button to be that. Mode can be, um, I don't know, the home button. And I'm gonna show the owner how to do that. The, um, the call button or the voice can be, I don't know, mute or something like that. It really depends on what the owner wants. I'm gonna just do what I would probably want. So the the back button, I'm gonna have it to be the voice. Uh, so this guy does have an aftermarket uh, subwoofer right there. I don't know if you guys can see the controller. And there was existing T-taps right here. Boom. Now what I did was I used those two RCA jacks coming from the subwoofer amplifier. And I have it plugged in to, I use a, uh, a Y splitter and I plugged it into the subwoofer out. Now a lot of people, not a lot, not a lot of you aren't gonna have that. Let me adjust it so it's, you're not getting flash banged right now. Now a lot of you guys will have, won't have this, but it does have subwoofer out right there. And I'm telling you, it that subwoofer does hit pretty hard. <laughs> Let me tell you that. So, um, other than that, I'm gonna just plug the rest of the stuff. You're just gonna have to just screw it on, which I'm gonna just do. It's, it's pretty easy. You just screw it on to the back of the head unit. I don't know if you guys can see that pretty clearly. So this is a GPS antenna. It's a subwoofer cable, and it comes with a bunch of stuff. You just plug everything you can in the back. And then you, we're not doing 4G or anything like that. And uh, that's it. This main wire, this one wire, pretty much handles everything. Now, we gotta transfer the old stuff to the new car, like the vents. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that too. Uh, let's start with the hazard button, because it's, it's pretty easy. You just plop it back in. That's it, easy. All right, so the next thing we have to do is take off these vents. See? No, I'm dealing with really crappy lighting, so you guys have to just have to make do. But to take the vents out, there's four clips. I'm sure there's plenty of room so you're not like hitting anything. So there's these two top ones right here. 
and then there's two bottom ones which you can kind of see easier and all you have to do is lift it and pull lift and pull lift and pull when I say pull is add, add pressure to it now we do the top now you can use this with a flat head which actually might be easier but um, I'm using this pry tool because it's just safer so we just have to get this last tab right here Boom, and the whole thing should just pull out. Boom, so the, here's the two tabs, just so you guys can see a better view, or the two like clips areas. You can kind of see where you need to pry open this little thing. Do that to both sides, and uh, we'll take out the AC unit, and that's it. All right, so once you removed each vent right here, you can put it onto your new head unit. Now it's just the reverse step, so it's not too bad. Let me get rid of this wire. It's not too bad. You see how the, you see that there's clips right here? Kind of like how you removed it. You want to install it. Now you do you do the top one first and then you pull down. So kind of get it inside of it but not all the way in. Then you pull it way down and then you just push it in. You'll hear a satisfying click. That means you did it good on certain clips. Boom. So now we have a nice vent right here. All right, so you have something like this. Test the vents, make sure they're all good. And open the flaps. There's no clearance issue. And we're set here. Next, we're gonna tackle the AC climate control. All right, so the next thing we need to do, guys, is to transfer this climate control unit, the HVAC system, into the new one now if you look at the back it's just being held by four phillips head screwdrivers so i'll point them out you got one two three four and then it's being held by clips too so just unscrew it i don't think i need to show you guys that but so then pulls straight out let's put this to the side now you want to keep that because let's say you plan on changing it eventually uh going back to oem for whatever reason it's nice to have that in a safe place and to transfer it over we look at the new head unit let's put back our little foam pad right here and these are the gps antenna all that jazz i know it looks like kind of like a rat's nest right now but trust me it'll look good uh, and that's the good thing that it's kind of like a little single den setup or a, a two, uh, one and a half is because uh, you get more clearance and you can put more stuff in there. All right, to put it, it's kind of like the opposite. Make sure the two tabs are facing up here, match it up and then push in. After that, you just screw it in. Those four screws that you just that I just took out. I know I can cut a lot of this stuff out, but I think um, from from what I hear, you guys like uh, kind of like a more thorough of the steps. I don't blame you. I mean, this is this unit is like it, it's a good price. It's like five hundred. Uh, 550 but um you know that's a lot of money so you definitely want to you want to you want the whole story now can can anybody do the, the, this install honestly yes you just need a phillips head screwdriver and a flathead and that's all you need to uh, to remove this so no no tendil no ratchets or anything it's pretty easy to do this install um if you have guidance with the video now I definitely recommend watching this video and kind of going through what I'm doing because even though it's um, easy, it is there. Are, there is a lot of steps and I can see where someone could have issues. Now we look at this right here, looking good. All right, so we have everything installed, and I'm just gonna go through it all. So the antenna wire is kind of short, so it's right here though. This is a 4G we're not using. 
the GPS adapter we have right here. And uh, for my for my uses, I usually just stick this uh, 3M tape on the very top of it. That way it's like out of the way and still looks good. You don't really need to have that showing. This wire right here is for the subwoofer controls and uh, several accessories, so definitely plug that one in. This one's your USB, and then this one was the, um, again, more antenna, so definitely just plug that in. You, you might not have anything plugged into that one, but uh, that's just for more antennas. Followed by the main one that controls everything. That's the important one. So let's wrap this up. I have the USB cable right here fished to his um, his glove box area when he decides to use it. So it's pretty cool. Cool. Now when you put everything back, just kind of I like to just kind of push it back here. And uh, yeah. sure we plug in that um, antenna so we get AM and FM AM and FM and then we play it plug in the main harness everything and then we have those two wires on the bottom too So we have it like that, and don't forget the AC cables. Just do the install in the reverse, or yeah, install in the reverse. And I haven't fully put it in yet, but I'm gonna do the AC first, so then there's some wiggle room where I can manipulate a few things. All right, so we finished the install on the Crosstrek 2013. Fitment is really good. Check out those creases right there. It's very, very good. And then we have the AC unit still working clicky clacky i don't know what setting he had it on this was this was digital and then right here is also the other thing going on there so very cool some um, noteworthy things is the subwoofer still works this is an aftermarket one it actually slaps pretty hard i don't have my car and none of my cars really have subwoofers uh, aftermarket so it's good and then, yep, it's a sweet machine.